Hey guys, welcome to Squadron TV. Today on the Squadron History of the Hobby, I've got Valeria from ICM, uh, all the way from Ukraine. And we're going to talk about ICM models, how it got started, and uh, what they're up to these days. So, lots of really good kits that ICM does, and I really am looking forward to hearing what Valeria's got to say. So, let's get started. All right, I've got Valeria from ICM with me today. Uh, hello, Valeria, how are you? Hi, nice to see you, I'm good, and you? <laughs> oh, I'm doing pretty good, just uh, getting ready to talk about some good model kits. Um, you've got a lot of good things that have come out this year and that are coming out this year. I've got my own copy of your new catalog. It's very nice. I have the same one <laughs> there you with go. me. It's, it's, you did, y'all did a very nice job on that. Um, when they came in, it's just, uh, so many cool things. I really like how ICM kind of prepares the entire year worth of releases. Uh, it, it's not most companies, you know, you get this is what's coming this month or this is what's coming next month. But you go ahead and tell us everything that's coming out for the calendar year. H however, I do know, like the B26 that's finally getting released this month, sometimes plans change and things that were intended to be released get pushed back from time to time uh, so we know things happen but overall this is just a really great lineup uh, of products that are coming out this year now talking about that B26 and there's a few other kits that you had announced for last year in 23 that didn't quite make it so when you get these 24 uh, releases how do you go about you realize that you've got to finish up the year for 23 before you get into the 24. How does that process work uh, as far as planning the next year, but still having to finish up the previous year? Um, yes, that's the, how ICM is working with our production. Um, the first, it's important to say that all our production office and manufacturing of molds and everything is located on the one roof. So we have the end cycle of the manufacturing. Uh, we are manufacturer with the manufacturing, as I say. We do everything by ourselves in house, and that helps us to control the production and to control the processes. That's awesome. And we plan uh, our factory work twenty four hours per day, and it works all the time. It wow. never stops. So the molds manufacturing work with the day shifts and night shifts, same with an injection uh, department, it works a day and night. So wow. um, that's why uh, we need the constant schedule for the manufacturing for the whole year. And that's how we work uh, all the time uh, for more than 20 years. We plan the production for the whole year, for each month. So we um, started to plan the range and to plan the schedule around in july or okay. in, even in june and in november we have the finished line for the whole next year for that moment already we understand that sometimes some items are postponing till mm -hmm. the next year and unfortunately now we live in the conditions that um sometimes we need to stop our work and um for the safety reasons and all the stuff Okay, when the air raid siren started, all our stuff is going to the bomb shelters right. and the work interrupted. And because of such as interrupting, some uh, we of course are going out of the schedule. But we're trying to follow it strictly and uh, we actually know uh, which mode for each items will be finished, um, I don't know, in July or in October or in November. So it's strict schedule for the whole year that's really awesome now with that big of a production everything being in-house i can imagine you've probably got a pretty good number of employees and people working there approximately how many people do you have there at the warehouse at the, at the operation we have nearly 150 people uh, but at the in one moment at the same moment uh, around more than um 60 or 70 are working at our plant and right. of course we have many uh, a lot of outsourced stuff like uh, 3d designers artists mm -hmm. uh, historicals and so on so on the plant there are around 65 okay. i don't know person mm -hmm. that's awesome now back let's back up just a little bit how did you get started with icm 
Actually, there's a final, it's a family business and okay. uh, everybody knows. And as, as saying the truth, the most companies in this market, uh, uh, including the distribution companies and manufacturers are family. And we are not an exclusion. We are okay. uh, also family that my father is an owner of ICM. I see. And um, actually ICM has like two generations. The first uh, one was before, uh, till the 2004 and then some people remember that items but it was totally different icm and run by different people and then my family started to run icm from 2004 uh so and personally me in the business uh, for 10 years now okay now so your family got involved and bought it in 2004 before that was the company still based out of ukraine the company was always based in Ukraine, okay. and it it was uh, like um, founded like an Ukrainian company. Okay. But uh, I I know a little things about that, so yeah, that's fine. But, but, but it, so it started in Ukraine, and then okay, excellent. Yeah. That's very good. So your father, uh, being one of the owners, uh, are there any other of your family this involved besides your father and yourself? Um, no, he's uh, the single owner, and okay. um, uh, sometimes uh, people ask if uh, he's a modeler, modelist. Right. No, he he has never built any single model kit. Actually, wow. I'm sorry if he, if no, you hear that. No, that's <laughs> that's fine. You know, you're talking about the family business. Uh, we are also a family business, so I, I own Squadron, uh, but my dad Russ owns the MMD distribution, and my brother Jared he works with us. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's the same thing, family business. And I, and I think you're right. There's a lot of family businesses in this industry, um, on the manufacturing side and on the distribution side, and even at the retail, the hobby shop level side. So really? it's, uh, it's very interesting to see. And that's great that I mean, I see him as also a family owned business. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what is your role at ICM? I know you're the, the sales manager, the export manager. Um, is that kind of what you spend all your time doing? Or give us a little idea of what you do with the company. Oh, actually, um, you may be as a son, you understand that when you are involved in a family business, you are involved in everything at the same time. But uh, it's <laughs> Yes, joke, I do but, understand uh, that. But saying the truth. Um, I'm like an, a head of export department. Okay. But uh, so the, my main job is to uh, distribute the goods, to open new markets, to develop the markets, and to uh, fulfill some orders, to make the um, order shipping plans, and so so on. But uh, uh, still, we are, uh, you know, when it it is um, something that is close to your heart, so it's. Uh, the company that is important for you and everything inside is important for you so right. uh, so i'm really involved in many processes uh, in uh, creating the um, even the product even the range in new items creating okay. the schedule planning the manufacturing um creating the catalog actually that was my job also oh, well, um, good you did a like, great um, job with it Oh, thank you. And so, so on. It's not because you are um, a family and because um, it's really close to you. It's important to you. Right. Any single details is important, are important for you. So you are, you wanted to be involved in many things. I see. Well, good. Well, I'm glad you're a little in, or involved in a little bit of all of it. Uh, that's just really good. The, you know, going back to the catalog, ICM produces such a variety of different products um, and I know or, or I assume that certain products probably sell better in different countries. Uh, for example, the B26 that's coming out, that's going to be a great selling kit for us uh, and I assume your other distributors in the USA. Uh, I mean, I brought some of the kits with us, you know, these Studebaker kits, these are great U.S. subjects. So anything U.S. sells well here, I know that a lot of your 
newer uh, Ukraine current Ukraine type vehicles and figure sets. I imagine those are probably doing well all over the world, uh, supporting Ukraine and just being interested in what's currently going on and learning about these vehicles that Ukraine is using. Uh, but then there, you have so uh, so many other types of um, things. Do you see? certain things selling better in certain parts of the world based on subject matter. Sure. Yeah. And I'm sure that all the manufacturers see that. Oh, yeah. Um, but um, there are some types of items, for example, like a Studebaki, you, you're right. But uh, of course, it is a bestseller in the in American market. Right. But the B26, um, now we are uh, finishing this item and uh, preparing for the shipments and the first shipments will be um, in uh, seven days like that. And I see the demand um, almost equally around the world and same in Ukraine. So there are some significant significant items of uh, from manufacturer, like for example, our CH-54 that issued previous year, it, it was, it was an American subject, but it is so unique and so mm -hmm. unlike, but there is nothing similar on the market in such scale and such size. So it becomes significant. And for many people in many countries, it's important to have some um, significant items of each company. Right. And, but, but of course, uh, our task in at ICM, when we are sitting and starting to plan the range, yes, that is. It's, it's that huge. It is. It's, it's a very large, huge. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it it was the best seller of ICM last year in terms of quantity. So it was our absolute best seller last year. And you know what's interesting about that? It's it's interesting you say that because obviously at Squadron we we sell a lot of ICM. We love ICM, but we sell other manufacturers kits as well. And you know, you look at something like this, and first of all, it's huge. But then at first glance, you see the price and you're like, wow, that's an expensive model is, is what you might think as a retail customer. But it doesn't matter. It's so cool. It, everybody that's what wants I'm talking it. About. Yeah. And, and it's not just with ICM. It's other brands, too. It's almost like the more expensive and the more the bigger it is, the more people want it. Uh, and we were just we were very surprised how well it did. But then after you see pictures of it you can't help but buy it if you're a modeler and you're into that type of subject. So um, I was really pleased to see that. And I know you've got another uh, couple of variant versions of it coming this year with the containers and all that. So uh, looking forward to seeing those. The, that's what I'm talking about. Actually, we at ICM, maybe Ross better know that uh, we did our best to keep uh, the pricing level and and we are really take a look on it. So we don't want to expand the prices and the right. uh, uh, just like some internal things for um, our listeners that ICM kept the prices from 2023 to yep. 2024 for the all the old ranges. So um, it was important for us. And in terms of the CH54, the price is actually um, really sane about the, this kit oh, yeah. because it is really the biggest our project and the sizes of molds and the time that we spend on it and the quantity of rivets on it just believe it um open it and look at it oh it's i know worth it. and yeah and i was not saying it's an expensive model it is it costs more than other helicopters but i mean look at this it's huge yeah. compared to other it's helicopters. really huge i mean it's and i have a it's and i can huge, open you a small huge. secret next year we plan the different scales you can predict which but uh, the different ah, scales will be for sure very yeah. good more than yeah. just 35th scale that's uh that's yes, gonna yes, be good for sure yeah yeah it's i mean when you see that uh, how how big it is in person it's just it's, it's really, really so you know we we had a funny story we built uh, after the release uh we just made the build up of this kit just mm -hmm. for our intern for office to show even our workers look what we did together and uh, it was done on the shelf right and uh, the chief engineer who is really the um like the main of on the manufacturing he went through and uh he pulled it with a shot. Okay, it it fall down and broke. Oh gosh! Totally, it was totally destroyed. Oh no! 
and it was really fun. Yes, now, th yes. This is your website. <laughs> so this is the, is this the one that you're talking about that fell and broke? Yeah. Uh, no, no, the build one. This one, this test building. Which oh, this is, is the uh, test build. Okay. Yes, this is only the test building. After the test of each mold, we just make the test building to check the instruction, to check the video instruction. Actually, we are making the video who don't know uh, we have the YouTube channel and there are video instructions of each item. So if you have of the newest items, most popular and okay. the B26 will also have the video instructions. So if oh, you have good. some issues with the instruction paper one and you don't understand something, something is not clear, you just can see the video instruction. There is an S3D the you can check. Yeah, and okay. the, that is the test build. And we had the new one, the builded one, the painted one. It was great and we just thought oh we can take it to uh, with us to the germany to the massa to the exhibition but uh, we know that it was broken <laughs> yep and this is yes, your yes, youtube channel yes. yep yep yeah, so the there's YouTube there's channel that. and video instruction yes excellent well i will have to make sure and link to your video instructions on my website because uh, that is uh, something very nice to see Awesome. Saying about the big family business, my our middle brother is making this 3D instructions. Okay. So it's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we'll fast forward mm -hmm. here to the end of that video where we can see well, it's taking forever. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so you say your brother is the one that's putting this together. So there we go. So there is some more of the family involved. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. So that's neat that not only uh, do we get great models, we get great videos of how to put them together. And th as that picture just showed, uh, you can get a paint set that is specific for the model. Uh, you've got your own line of acrylic paints now. And yeah. we carry them and they are, they are slowly starting to get more and more popular, getting more and more customers uh, starting to use those. They, I like them. I've tried them. I, I really like them. And I think as more customers start using them and trying them, they realize that they're pretty nice and uh, then they come back for more so I really for us I see your paint starting to take off more and more and I know you have them all in paint sets do you also mm -hmm. offer them individually yes we offer okay. them individually but um, not all the distributors just are ready to start it from the whole range right. and actually we have not a big range of the colors uh, but uh, we decided to start with the paint sets and the idea is uh, to have the small jars like uh, 12 milliliters mm -hmm. uh, so the one paint set and one jar is enough to paint one model kit so you just can uh, take and try um, the idea of icm kits is um, to find the balance between the high level of details mm -hmm. and the between the enjoy of making joy right. the uh, making the model not right. to build one model for the half of the year so it's like um not of course the model for the weekend it's right. a bit more but um the idea is for the beginners you can build the model out of the box and it will have a good enough quality the good enough detailing and for and this is the answer sometimes uh, people ask why we don't include the photo age parts or more photo age parts or some uh, i don't know uh, decals for the seat belts or something mm -hmm. else more and more so for the beginner it, it's enough to build from out of the box and the pricing level is keeping because of this for the normal pricing oh, yeah. level for the professional model builders it will be never enough Right. Never enough exactly. for the age part if we will include never enough the uh, 3D decals or something. It it will still be, will be never enough. He right. will still buy the aftermarket. Yep. But if we will include it from the start, the price will be totally different. Yep. So uh, that's what we're trying to keep the balance. And then we are going to the paint. For the beginners, um, it's difficult to make the selection between the so huge quantity of brands of course there are some best sellers and leaders of the market but it's difficult to just imagine when the beginner comes to the shop and wants to build uh, b26 for example i don't know and just starting to um choose the paints 
So we just offer you the paint set. It, it's just really you good. Can take the, if you are a beginner, this will be more than enough for you. That will be more than enough paints, more than enough colors. You can mix it to be, between each other. Each paint set includes the varnish. So it's enough for you to try and to use. If you like it and if you are more professional, you can go to the whole range. That's uh, that. That was the idea of that. And actually, uh, um, for for that people who wants to try, we have the paint set for the B twenty six, and also we have the paint set that is calling "Try Me," and it it, right. it includes the best, uh, the po the most popular colors: uh, black, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, NATO green or something like that, white, a gray primer, and it's a uh, the item number is 3020 Let's see. It's Try Me. It includes the most popular colors. Yep, this one. Is. Oh, yep. 3020. Yeah. Yep. Try Me. So that's the color that you will still have on your shelf. And you will use it in any right. case. So yeah. you will not put it to rubbish. And it has a really great quality. So just take it and try it. Well, I think it's a great idea from for me on the retail side dealing with the retail customers you're talking about the beginners and i would say it's not just the beginner modeler uh, necessarily but a lot of people they might see a model that they like let's take that we keep talking about the b26 so let's take this as an example yep. they might see the b26 and they might not know anything about that particular aircraft it doesn't mean they're not a fan of World War II uh, aircraft. They just maybe they just haven't known much about this plane yet. They see the model, they like it, and they have no idea which colors they should buy. Well, you've already done the work for them. You get the different colors that you need to paint it like your box art represents. And the same thing with all of the different vehicles. It takes the guesswork and it takes the research off of the customer, and they can simply buy this paint set and they can build this type of vehicle right out of your paint box and I really like that you know you talked about there are leaders and, and whatnot in the paint industry and, and you're right there are so many paint lines out there but very few of them are doing this and even the companies that are doing paint sets it's more usually it's more of a generic you know US aircraft okay well that's a pretty broad term because yeah each type of aircraft was potentially painted different so i really like the way you're doing these paint sets and the price of a paint set like this it's really really good it, it does it's not much at all it also the main things actually in uh, for example in ukraine um uh, this uh, our paints are best sellers because the main things also the model is will confirm the main things among the paint is to have uh, the stock the shops and the distributors must have uh, all, all the time the stock. You have to refill it. So in Ukraine, uh, we keep uh, the huge stock all the time. And for those who like the paint, we have the paint set 3004, the item number. And this is the box that included all our paint range with the uh, old varnishes. Okay, yep, this one here. Oh, this I see. One, yeah. Yep, so it's your full line. And That's I know awesome. the cases when the two people or three just buy the space set and share with each other just to try. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to uh, make sure Russ continues to bring more and more of the paint in because I, I do like <laughs> it and I hope that it continues to grow uh, not only for ICM but for all the uh, distributors and retailers that sell your products. So that's great. Now, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the subjects we keep talking about the b26 so we'll continue on that for a moment how do and if you share what you will and uh perhaps you have some inside secrets that you don't have to share but how do you go about how does icm go about deciding which subjects how did you decide hey let's do a b26 this year oh you know uh we had the line of invaders okay and uh even only the lazy person didn't write us that we need to make the Marador, the B26. 
and uh, everyone shouted to us from everywhere and of course this decision was like on the top so i just uh, came to our team when we have one of the dozens meetings uh, uh, in terms of the range and just told we need to do that but the people thought that uh, b26 is almost the same aircraft that a26 invader or uh, and they just thought that we need to make some tiny corrections and to have the b26 marauder but all my, our team told me that it's totally different aircraft yeah. you don't understand that it's totally different huge and a big project and your task is my task and your our team just to explain the people and the distributors right. and the buyer that it is totally new different project yeah so we decided just to do it um sometimes we a few years ago we did like an uh, questionary or i don't know how to go just like a vote mm -hmm. in a facebook sometimes we do it in the end of the year and just ask the customers what you want to see in icm range and a uh, few years about this yes so uh, we just uh, many people write us and offer some ideas that uh, some people from the magazines or just just the customers oh look you have this aircraft you can add also this one and make the line or you can make these corrections and make the round the line so the advantage of our market is that um, modelists are in and enthusiastic so yes. they just wanted if they wanted to have uh, this item in hands if they wanted to have this model kit uh, they will find which manufacturer can do that and on <laughs> right and yeah. ask them and, and, and with icm it works sometimes so we trying to hear our customers of course well that's really good and it's funny you say that uh, because a lot of times i find that sometimes our customers they know more than we do about the stuff yeah. that we're selling and in your case the stuff that you're making uh, but that's really good and and it's very i'll make this point about icm caring about their products it, it's not just putting another model in a box and shoving it down the distributors line just to make a buck but so if i understood you correctly the b26 marauder started out as just another version of your already B26K, A26, Invader, all yeah, that, yeah. because you thought it was just going to be easy. You said, like, hey, let's just do yeah. a Marauder. And then you realize it's a totally different aircraft, which, by the way, is very confusing. <laughs> that is just a confusing <laughs> but, thing. But, but still. <laughs> right. But after you realized, you said, well, we've already announced we're going to do it. We're, we've kind of got our heart set on doing it. You went to the trouble of getting all the correct research and creating an actual B-26 Marauder instead of just putting, you know, some other manufacturers I can think of might have just, you know, put the uh, different version of the A-26 in the box and called it a Marauder. But ICM, I, I can tell that ICM really cares about their product and being as accurate as possible. Uh, so that's, that's just a really good thing. You know, it's like... Um my motto to stand uh, icm is always stand behind the product uh, or uh, we just guarantee uh, that uh, we did our best and if we don't we will correct it we will check it and correct and um, i want to um, tell uh, the listeners that icm has a unique after sales service actually i think you know it may be from the bus mm -hmm. the thing is um we have a I think unique after sale service because okay. we change everything for free if you even spoil or break something by yourself but if you make the purchase from the official distributor or from his customer mm -hmm. so for example if person writes us and told us i lost the decal or my dog uh, broke uh, i don't know the sprue and i bought it from mmd um we don't sometimes we don't even ask the uh bill because we know we i i'm, I'm checking the um, list of supply to mmd and checking that really this item was left to mm -hmm. mmd just a few months ago so it is obvious and now uh, we are sending the direct parcel to the customers for free with the sprue or with the decal so um 
when buying ICM, you can be always sure that you can finish your model kit. Even if you broke something by yourself or you uh, wasn't able to make something from the first try, you will have the second try always. That's awesome. And I know that I have had a few customers uh, that have taken ICM up on that offer uh, and through Russ at MMD. Uh, you and him were able to get those parts to the customers and they always email me back or call me back and, and say thank you. So I extend their thank you on to you. Uh, but that's a great thing. Uh, just good kits, good customer service. I mean, what more can somebody ask for in a manufacturer? So, uh, you know, talking about the going back to the B26 yet again, I guess that's what we're going to talk about the whole time, right? Obviously, that is why that kit got delayed from 23 to now in 24. It was really huge. Yep. Yeah. That's and the one more thing. reason why why it was delayed, um, you know, we have, uh, um, we stuck some with a problem because uh, our 3D designers were left to war. Okay. And suddenly uh, we just realized that we are lack of resource of people who are making the 3D. And actually, okay. guys, now we are, uh, we just fix it for the current moment, but we are still have the lack of resource. So if everyone wants to work with ICM and know how 3D design is making, just feel free to write us. And um, we can uh, even teach you with, uh, uh, help you with a study with some things, but we are looking for 3D designers. Okay. And this oh. was the main reason why the B26 was delayed, just because the 3D design because right. it is the most important part for us just because if this 3D mold, 3D design of the aircraft and the molds uh, projected correctly and properly, then the whole manufacturing of the molds is going smoothly. And uh, that was the main reason yeah. why it was postponed. Well, you, you found out that you basically had to create a brand new kit from scratch and you've you got to have the 3D designers to do that. Now, would that be the same situation with other things? I know uh, the Burma Jeep, was announced and it's not quite same ready yet. Thing. Same type same of thing. thing, just trying to same get thing. the 3D designs yes. done to finish up the year. Yes, okay. we, uh, you know, we couldn't predict that. Like, oh, sure. We, uh, you just, you just can <laughs> predict it. You have to manage that today. Um, right. You have that situation. So they are now in the uh, front line and we are holding a connection with them they are okay right. and defending our country but uh, that was the reason yes and the bourbon jeep also yeah and and i don't see that as a problem our customers in this industry uh for the most part are just really good people and and they understand delays happen but like i mentioned earlier i would rather and i think many of our customers would rather have a delay rather than have a product rushed to production that's not going to exactly. be good, not going to be accurate. So uh, we look forward to seeing all the rest of the announcements that didn't quite make it in 23. Um, and I know they're going to be good when they get here. So now, so we, we've gone through 23, you've got your new catalog and I'm going to pull that up here uh, and we'll take a look at this. You've got so many uh, really nice subjects that have been announced. This catalog is really great. And by the way, anybody that's watching, this catalog is available on the ICM website, which is icm.com.ua. And you can download a PDF of this uh, to look through. But you've got so many uh, things in here, and I'm sure we'll get to one in just a moment. You've got all of the nice, pretty box art that's been done, but there are some things that you've announced that maybe you don't have the box art for yet. Um, yes, we and, didn't, and place the photos. Yeah. Oh, here's one right here. So the Sally, yeah. uh, the B model. So obviously things like that are not quite as far along in the production yet uh, as other things that you've already got your box art, or at least that's the assumption that I would make. Uh, but you feel confident enough to put it in the catalog that it's going to be done this year. Uh, you know, you've got, here's the B26B, and then you've got another version of it, the flat bait version, which I think is going to be a really popular kit as well. Take us through how this works when you're getting ready to make the catalog for the year. I know you mentioned that you start talking about that in July and you finalize it in November. 
certainly there's probably things that you were wanting to get in the catalog, but you said, you know what, we better hold off on that. So I'm sure you've got a list of things that that none of us even know about yet that I'm sure we would all be excited about. But how do you decide what makes the cut and what does not make the cut uh, as far as what you're going to officially announce? Oh, uh, we have a huge, huge list. Uh, you know, now uh, we will take a short brief out and uh, now it's the March ending. And uh, I think in May, we will already start to make the box art for 2025. So I'm just wow. wanting to say that it is the constant list of new items. And I'm sure all the manufacturers have the same situation. Right. That it's like they're constantly, it's like a wish list what mm -hmm. you want and then you just compare it with what you can do what what the production facilities you have and what uh, opportunity and you just combine it and trying to find the balance between what you want and what you can do and uh, saying the truth in our company there is always the battle be between what we want to issue and what we can to issue we have the limitation of uh, machine working hours mm -hmm. and um, it's like uh, and we our target is to um place in this schedule in this working hours the things that we uh, as i said to find the balance between what we want and uh, we started from the 100 percent new items so uh, with the fully new molds items like uh, for example in 2024 we decided that we for sure want to have b26 that for sure we will do the Burma because we announced it and we never canceled the items very, very just seldom. Okay. So if we announced it, we have to finish it. Or we decided that we want to have this, 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 this. Okay, this is uh, our production uh, department told us that it's like uh, this amount of working hours and you have lived this like that's small the 30 percent of that okay and uh, and we started to find the balance between it and um, production of figures for example you just uh, uh scrolling through the figures production of figures are the different departments so the figures in our company also are making in-house okay and the master models of each figures are sculpted by the sculptures by oh. their hands so they're not 3D. so Yes, it's not a 3D, um, cool. and each figures are made by the hands of our, our sculptors. So it, it's also rather unique. So we just planning what the capacity has the figure department, what the capacity has our own department, and just trying to find the balance between it. But if we decided that this item will be in the catalog, uh, and we don't have a box art, and usually we don't have a box art of the uh, item that has the figures mm -hmm. because we cannot sculpt the master models right. really in advance so right. uh, we just put in the photos and um, the photo is uh, always trying to like uh, give the idea of the main plot of uh, this item right well and it gives us something to look forward to you know we're like this half track so okay cool, that's going to be coming. I can't wait to see the box art. And, you know, it gives you something to look forward to, gives you another reason to come to the ICM website each month to see what the official box art images look like. Um, so that will be nice. Now, talking about box art, I, I can assume that many of the vehicles, because they're done in 3D, I figure that these are probably 3D rendered images, but you can't do that if the figures are not 3D. So are the, are the images for the boxes for figures are those traditionally uh, painted box arts or what how do you come up with the box art for your figures you know even for some vehicles it is not the 3d rendered oh, all our okay. box arts it's like a it's really box art some of the artists nice. are using the 3d but sometimes like for a b26 actually uh which we announced two years ago or mm -hmm one and a half year ago we didn't have the 3d then and they just um and we also tried to find the balance between the historicals and the production department and trying to decide what this kit will look like 
for example, for the Burmujib, we don't have this really yet now. It is in process, but it is not finished. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is like, uh, it's an art. <laughs> okay. Well, and the, for the good. figures, figures are making the bo box art are painting from the master models. So the sculpture and making the master model. Oh, this one actually, Ford A, mm -hmm. will be the new item of April. Okay. So I think it will be also quite popular in the United States. Oh, yeah. The scale and the subject. Will... Oh, absolutely. I mean, just scrolling through the catalog, you can see the, the huge variety of different types of products from vehicles, different types of figures. I mean, it's just a little bit of everything. Um, <laughs> you, you come through here and you've got uh, current SWAT guys, you've got World War II guys, you, and here's a Viking. You know, and then you've got the guys from the Squid Game. So it's just. But all of them are popular. So it's like, uh, right. you know, the, you shouldn't be the fan of some uh, special subject to make the 116 scale. You just right. want to have the collection on your shelf. So it uh, give us opportunity to choose the variety sure. of subjects. Well, going back to what you first said with a factory that runs 24-7, with 150 plus employees and you talked about always needing to have basically have something for everybody to do to keep busy to keep the machines running it only makes sense to have such a large variety because every model customer doesn't build aircraft every model customer doesn't build tanks doesn't build figures but they're all model customers so if you create all sorts of different types of models you've got something to offer every model customer so that's, you know, some companies might only make aircraft. Well, they're never going to sell a model to a, uh, a figure customer. But and some ICU, of them are making aircraft in 172 scale and they, they will never right. recognize the sort of five sets. Um, that's exactly. obvious. When we are making, uh, when we are making after the um, approving the final line, uh, which will be done in uh, next year, like, and the main uh, task also is to place it to make the monthly schedule of new items. So, okay, we understand that we have we will have these 72 items for the 2024, but which one of it will be issued in which month? And that's also the task. We just wanted to, to keep the sometimes different scales and sometimes different subjects and the periods of times. We pay a lot of attention to this also. Right. Okay. For all the people each month to find something appropriate for them uh, at ICM. Okay. Well, that's very, very good. Um, the, the, a lot of customers, th they always ask when they call me and they're asking about whatever the model may be. And sometimes customers don't realize where ICM is located and they might ask hey when is this coming or when are you going to get this back in stock and and I always say you know we've got them on order we'll have them soon and I just say we will get them as quick as we can get them out of Ukraine and when I say that they kind of they're stunned because they they just don't un, they don't realize that that you're able to continue doing business in you know during the war and they're not they're not aware of the fact that we're able to get products out of there. And then I explain it to them and they're kind of stunned and, and I can understand why. Uh, but it's just a really, we're so happy that you are able to, despite what's going on right outside your doors, that you're able to continue doing business because it's not just so you can provide model kits to all us model builders. This is your living. This is how you make money. This is how you put food on your table. Um, so it's great that you're able to continue doing business. It's great that you're able to continue supplying these models uh, to the distributors around the world. Um, I know that it's completely changed your life, changed how you do business. Um, is there anything that you want to say uh, on doing business with ICM now? versus doing business with ICM before the war, just anything that our customers may find interesting to hear from you. First of all, of course, I want to say thank you. 
I want to say thank you to all the people, to the customers and to our distributors and to MMD also, um, because um, I know that many people at the beginning of the war uh, bought ICM and many other Ukrainian brands just to support Ukraine, just to buy Ukrainian things. And I'm, I'm, I really appreciate it. And I'm, I'm really honored to do that. And uh, our task, our main task, we understand that sometimes you do it to support only Ukraine. Our main task is to not to disappoint you with the quality. Our main task is when you bring it home and open the box that you must receive the stunning quality. You must receive the stunning after sale service. We, I think we, we just, it's our way to say thank you. I don't want the people buy the rubbish in, in, under the ICM just to support Ukrainian brands. Right. And I know many Ukrainian brands and they did really, really huge and great job. And that's our way to say thank you, just to make the quality product. Just to be short, um, as I'm saying, um, the risk management is became a normal way of management for us. Right. And uh, in terms of the holding the business and uh, living the normal life as a woman in Ukraine, uh, our factory located in Kyiv, and it, it, it is in Kyiv, in Ukraine, in the capital, we didn't move, so we are here. And uh, um, we just closed for around 25 days when the war started, and then our staff asked us, called us and asked us, please, can we continue to do our job because we want to, because we can go crazy just to sit in, at home. <laughs> right. uh, it was really difficult time and, uh, yeah. and um, the risk management became the normal management. So you don't understand uh, as a human and uh, as a business owner, you don't understand in what in which context you will wake up tomorrow. Right. So you are waking up and understand, for example, that at night was the missile attack and the, your supplier of some raw materials or for the age part was totally destroyed. Their factory was totally destroyed. And you have suddenly the things that you have to manage it now. So you now need to help him to renew his factory and uh, find a new supplier, for example. So the risk management is became a normal management. And um, I can proudly say that ICM didn't postpone any single shipment because of the war from the, from the beginning of the war. We skipped the items, uh, one month of items, uh, March 2022, but we didn't delay any single shipment. Uh, in these conditions, we have all items all the time in stock, and we pack I order of any amount of any size uh, four or five working days. So we did our best just to say thank you for the support. Well, good. I, I know, like you said, a lot of customers started to buy more Ukraine product because of supporting it, and that's great, and, and I'm glad they did. But uh, for whatever reason, customers are buying ICM kits. Uh, there is no denying that the quality is there. These these kits are superb, and I remember some of the kits from the '90s, the early kits that you talked about, uh, and even some of the kits where when after 2004, when your family got started, and it's very interesting to look back and see how the quality of the product has improved over the last 20 to 30 years. And it's just, it's great. I mean, the kits that ICM is putting out now, ICM kits have always been good, but now I would consider these like top of the line, you know, whatever model company you consider to be the best, I would put ICM right next to them. Uh, I really do, they're really great. The, the kits themselves are good, and you know you're talking about we don't have all the photo etching things but you're right the the professional models uh, modelers the rivet counters as we jokingly call them they they are going to buy whatever aftermarket products come out anyway so to put uh, 
as you stated, a, a sort of a middle of the road product out that a beginner can use, but the professional can also use, and he can go buy whatever aftermarket he wants. The product is great. The instructions are great. Uh, we now know that you have the videos on your YouTube channel, so we can watch a digital version of the kit going together. The presentation the boxes, these are really sturdy boxes, very fine uh, images on the thing, on the box. The customer service, the aftercare like you were talking about, it's just a great product. So for whatever reason, customers are buying ICM, that's fine. But don't ever worry about the quality not being there because it is. And we really, really appreciate the product. And I think that customers like it. And I hope after customers see this video... Uh, if you've not tried an ICM kit in a few years, maybe you got Just one of those tried. kits. For, yeah, if maybe you got one of those kits <laughs> from 20 years ago, try a new yeah. one. You will be blown there are away. some cases. Yep. You know, um, just an off top. Yesterday, uh, we now have the test building of the B26 because molds one after mm -hmm. another are ready, and we need to test it. And we have two modelers in uh, our office. Who are making tests of the screws okay. of the molds of the instructions and now they're testing the b26 one of uh, them is don't uh, like to make the aircraft at all that's okay. what we are talking and then the another one don't build anything except the 172 scale so b26 okay. in 148 scale is totally not their subject at all Okay. But they have their job and they need to make the test of the B26. And yesterday I've just uh, uh, quietly stand behind the corner and just listening to what they are talking about while why they are building the aircraft. That it's like a test spruce. It's not the finished one. And, and they are just talking with each other. I hate aircraft. I hate aircraft. But look at this fuselage. Look, I enjoy it. I hate I hate 48k. I hate but, but look at this. I, I enjoy the building. Look at this. Look at this. And I'm really um that's our kit and I like it and I yeah. uh, um and you can just think that I'm um uh not uh, like uh, quite critical but I heard that and so if you don't try I see them, just try it. <laughs> And give it a chance, and you I'm sure you will be satisfied. I got you. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about one more thing, and then we'll wrap this up. When we first started, you mentioned that your father never built models. And we were talking about family business. Funny story. My father, who owns MMD, he's also never built a model. <laughs> He, he, his background in the hobby was he and I had a model train layout when I was a kid. So I guess in some ways he has built models because he built the train models and the buildings for his layout. But as far as aircraft and all that type of thing that we now consider models, that was never his thing either. But now after your father uh, has been in the business for so long, has he still not built a model? You know... Maybe he wants, but we okay. don't have time at all. <laughs> don't have really time at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, okay. Maybe. Now, when you got started, I'm I'm just guessing here that when you got started, you probably didn't really care about bombers and planes and tanks and things. You, I'm guessing, I could be wrong, that you probably got started because it was your father's business and you wanted to go to work and and help him and get involved in the family business. Would that be kind of accurate? Um, actually, yes. And, and nobody okay. from the family planned that it will become the family business. And nobody right. planned to involve me or some of it. was just accidentally, accidentally happened. Some I just came, okay, just help to write some emails or just help with the right. orders. And then I think by one by another. And uh, well, okay, now, that you've, now that you've been involved for 10 years, you said, have you taken an interest in any of the subject matter? Or do, are you, do you like airplanes now? Do you like tanks? Or surely there's some, some area of, of subject matter that you are at least a little bit interested now. If, if you are going to build a model, what is your, what do you find most interesting in all of the different types of models that ICM produces? 
Um, if I will build model, I <laughs> will start from aircraft for sure. Oh, okay, forty-eight scale. Um, I think so. Yeah. I think okay. so. Um, but um, I'm involved not more now in the subject, but mm -hmm. I'm I have I'm really patient about um, creating the product. When you see how the product appears from the beginning, from the really handwritten uh, drawings, from the real uh, schemes, from manuals, and then it became, and, and then you see the final box in your hand and going yeah. through all of these products, it's stunning, it's charming. When that you are cool. creating something and producing it and pack it and pack it in a shipping carton and ship, uh, that's that's amazing process when okay. you create it. Now, but, okay, so let me ask you this then, and, and this will be my last question. <laughs> so you are the one that is coming up with new products. You're doing the catalogs, the boxes, all of that. You said that you will start in May, if I understood you correctly, <clears throat> to make the tw 2025 boxes and things. So obviously I'm not asking you to tell us what it is but do you have something planned for the 25 releases that's really going to be popular that we're just going to go crazy about and love it is there something big like a b26 the b26 is so popular for this year is there so and the the ch54 uh, was you popular know, for last year do you have something planned for next year yep we did okay. and actually you know when i'm making the catalog my main idea um, i was joking that the people will open the first one page and okay. see that the model, the B26 will be in March 2024. Okay. And then they will open the last one page when see that the C core scale in 172 oh. scale will be in 2025. And they will close the okay. catalog and the, all the information is noted. Thank you. So uh, that was okay. a joke, but really on the last pages of our catalog, I present a few okay. items. Yes, it's Hanshin in 148 scale the black hawk in 35 because this year will be in 48 and okay. of course we announced the sikorsky in 172 and we have the box art for this you see yeah right. that's also. i just didn't even realize that was 72 scale so that's what you were yeah. talking about earlier when you have more scales yeah. of that coming yeah. very yeah. cool yes. that's still going to yes. be a really big kit in 72 scale Yes, that still will be, and but uh, it will be, of course, uh, smaller and uh, more and more people will have uh, more space at home to right. keep the 72 scale. Yeah, you've got to have a big shelf to uh, display the 35th scale one for sure. Yep. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, is there anything else that you would like to add um, or ask or, or anything else before we, we end this? I am just want to thank you for the talk. And uh, just, uh, I want to tell everyone that um, ICM is open for the communication always. Um, so if you want to contact with us, it's uh, rather simple. You can find the email on the website. You can, if you have some questions or issues with your uh, products, yes, you can, you have a re product re return form or request. Just write us, call us, and contact us. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter if you have any offers or just want to have a short talk with us. Just free, feel free to contact us. Absolutely. Or if you're a 3D designer looking for some, uh, some yeah. side work. And a box, <laughs> and a box art artist. <laughs> All also, right. if you want to work with us, also feel free to contact us. <laughs> All right. Yep. Well, awesome. Well, Valeria. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to do this video with us. Um, I just want to let you know that we will, uh, we have been, and we will continue uh, praying for you, your employees, your family, all the people in Ukraine for your safety, uh, for the peace uh, in your country, and uh, and we just really appreciate you continuing to go to work for us, so we can have these awesome model kits that ICM produces, and uh, we're looking forward to the next shipment and the next one after that. Uh, just so much good stuff coming out, and uh, we appreciate everything that you guys are doing over there. Thank you, Brandon. All right. Well, thank you so much, and, and we'll talk to you soon.
And there you have it guys, you've heard straight from Ukraine with uh, Valeria from ICM. You know a little bit more about ICM now, so uh, we've got a lot of their kits in stock. So if you've not tried an ICM kit uh, ever, or perhaps in a very long time, uh, give them a shot. They've got a lot of great kits, a lot of great subjects uh, in a lot of different scales, uh, planes, tanks, figures, uh, ships, cars, a little bit of everything. So make sure to check out www.squadron.com Head over to the ICM section in whichever category you're interested in and check it out. I'm sure we've got something that you would love. And until next time, y'all take it easy. Thank you.